I say Merry Christmas and God bless you. I strongly support President Trump, our troops, and ironclad borders, and I stand for our national anthem. If any of this offends you, then I'm not your guy. <laughs> that was Brian Kemp. He's Georgia's Secretary of State, and he's the Republican candidate for governor there. In other words, he's currently overseeing the election he's trying to win. And now he's being sued by a coalition of civil rights groups who say the method his office uses to verify new voter registration is discriminatory. Here's how the Washington Post describes it, quote, the exact match law requires election officials to flag and pause any voter registration application if the identifying information doesn't precisely match the voter's information in existing records, even because of something as small as a missing hyphen or a transposed number. Although voters voters are not barred from casting a ballot, they must take extra steps to verify their identities. But take a look at who this is really affecting. An investigation by the AP found there are currently more than 53,000 applications currently on hold at Kemp's office, and 70 percent, 70 percent of those belong to African Americans. Georgia's population is about 32 percent black. Kemp's opponent, Stacey Abrams, is demanding that Kemp resign from his post as Secretary of State. But time is running short. Georgia's deadline to register is Tuesday. The midterms are in 25 days and they're locked out in a tight race. Abrams and Kemp are statistically tied right now, according to a poll released yesterday. The panel's still here. Um, Rev, this seems like it's not even voter suppression disguised as something else. No, this is blatant. I mean, first of all, you should never have the Secretary of State who's over the voting process remain in office in any election that he's in. But on top of that, for, to have this guy, Kemp, decide on how they're going to put, quote, on hold people's registration, that's the term they're using, and then 70% of them are black, that was researched by Associated Press, right. not uh, one of the civil rights groups. Right. This is not Associated one of the Press. In the yeah. and none, none of the plaintiffs. This is, this is independently by Associated Press. On top of that, to have Kemp in charge of the process, mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it is as tainted why, as why, you could get. Why wouldn't he recuse himself? I mean, it, the only reason you wouldn't recuse yourself is because you want to have this advantage yep. and you want to be blatantly out there saying, I'm going to do what I want, even if we have to change the rules. Even DeSantis in Florida said, I'm going to leave uh, what I'm doing in Congress mm -hmm. and run for governor against uh, Gillum in Florida. This guy, Kemp, has not even done that when he is directly involved in the voting process. So he would, um, I mean, Jim Crow would blush if he would see <laughs> uh, uh, this guy, Kemp. It seems to me that we talk so much about the Trump effect. One of the effects of Trump seems to be this disregard yeah. for, um, we don't know that he broke the law, but this disregard for the norms. You're, you're talking, I mean, the norm is if you're the Secretary of State and you are running, you would recuse yourself, perhaps, from that election. Yeah, and he's not, and he's, he tried it a couple of months ago, not with this, but with the closing of the polls, and he lost there. So it's been a constant thing with Kemp, and he's not stopping, and the race is really close. I mean, Stacey Abrams could potentially become the first black woman elected to governor in a in a southern state, which just goes plays into the new South that we've been mm -hmm. hearing about. But I, I do want to step back for a second. This voter suppression has been going on across the country since the, the since 2013, when the Voting Rights Act was gutted, and we saw this in 2016 as well in in North Carolina, even in Wisconsin. There were voters who were disenfranchised, and they were people of color. And so this is this is a new play by Republicans since 2013. And it's unfortunately very successful. The one thing that was really great to see is in Alabama. Alabama had a voter uh, ID, a horrible voter ID law, but they, they, they came, they got over it, right? You got 98 percent of women who came out, black women who came out and voted, and they were able to educate people and let people know this is what you do if you if you're turned away to vote. Tim, sometimes I lie in bed at night trying to decide if the Trump administration is more sinister or more incompetent, and I and I and I and I wrestle with it until I fall asleep. I never really land on an answer. But, but it would appear that Trump and uh, Jared Kushner are trying to have a position on criminal justice reform. They're, they're trying to, to get in, they're trying to play in that space, if you will. It would seem that having someone running under the banner as a Republican, uh, operationalizing the disenfranchisement of, of, of what, 70,000 African-American voters would be in direct contradiction 
to his efforts to play in the space of criminal justice reform. The White House could easily do something. They could call this guy. He mentions the president in his ad. Why doesn't the White House call him and say, back off? Well, let me relieve you of your burden. When you go to, <laughs> when you go to sleep the next time, you can say that it's both incompetent and sinister. Is it a tie, I don't, I don't though? Think you, I don't think you have to choose between the two. Um, you know, I think where they are on prison reform is largely driven by Jared Kushner uh, being outraged about how his father was treated pardons, when he went to prison. Yeah, he wants to you play know, in the party. It, it's a very narrow space of this. Uh, you know, in, in both voter suppression, and this isn't just voter suppression, this is racially charged mm -hmm. voter suppression and gerrymandering. You had the 21st century sort of undoing the 20th century's efforts to get rid of all of these heinous abuses of the 18th and 19th century. And I think that Donald Trump has opened the door to people being comfortable wearing racially charged uh, uh, machinations or raw racism on their sleeve because of the way he responded to Charlottesville, because of his own history in New York yep. and elsewhere of using race as a very divisive tool and to force self-aggrandizement. So other members of the GOP see that. And, and to me, this isn't even about partisan politics, these issues, or ideology. It's about who we are as a country and what's a civilized way to discuss these issues and the extent to which Trump personally and the people around him have just torn that up. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.